Vikings, Vikings and dragons, Vikings and dragons, Vikings and dragons. <laughs> Hello and welcome. I can't. I can't. Hello and welcome <laughs> to the Park Stop Podcast, episode sixty-two. My name is Alicia Stella. With me, as always, is my co-host Ian and Mickey. <laughs> hey, kids! I already broke Alicia. Apparently, um, <laughs> she's crying. Okay, Mickey. Today we are talking about the grand reveal of all the official details for How to Train Your Dragon Isle of Burke at Universal Epic Universe opening at Universal Orlando in 2025. I swear we're professionals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, yeah, like, okay. I think our listeners and uh, uh, fans of the Theme Park Stop brand identity are probably well aware of all of the attractions and amenities of such a land. So while we will be going through it all... I kind of wanted to see what our thoughts were on the concept art, on the official officialness of everything. We're right. We're done. We've been talking about this for years. Let's go. I'm going to go eat now. <laughs> All right. Every mm-hmm. name. I think the only thing that anyone's pointed out that I was wrong about was Mead Hall's missing its E now. Because <laughs> like, I think even in like the video games, it's spelled with an E. Maybe they don't have the rights to the video game spelling. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I had heard that 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 because we we'd only seen the words Mead Hall because it wasn't a trademark. We'd only seen it in a contractor agreement mm-hmm. in a permit document for a notice of commencement, I think. And it was written out all the different uh, attractions and stuff. And they were using shorthand for all of them. They're like boat ride and coaster <clears throat> attraction, and boat. then Mead Hall. And I was like, whoa! I thought this was called the Great Hall. It's called the Mead Hall, and we've just been going with it. So it, maybe it's been spelled this way, you know. At Universal Creative the whole time. We just don't know because we've only got the permits. Who who has the typo at Universal Creative is what I want to know. <laughs> it's uh, um, anyway. Maybe the video game company has some kind of trademark on their version of it. Maybe. Universal had to change it. I don't know. I don't. There's there's I, all I, kinds of reasons. How is Mead normally spelled? I believe it has an E at the end. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I, then I don't. Maybe they wanted to trademark the word Mead, so they I, spelled it oh, differently. Like, whoa. Maybe. It's like butterbeer. I think I cracked the code. Mead is what? Honey alcohol? Honey alcohol. Fermented honey. What if their mead is non-alcoholic? Okay. Mead does not typically always have an E at the end. Oh, there you go. Well, then never mind. I I retract my theory. (laughs) The other mead I was thinking of was actually a whole different other thing. So So maybe they're they're spelling it right and the video game was spelling it wrong. Yeah, maybe. See? Don't don't and don't ever threaten me with non-alcoholic mead ever again, please. Thank you. I I want. Well, they'll probably call it like Lafou's Brew or something. Like the Hiccups, how do you even make that? Hiccups Honey Ale. I bet I'm, I'm putting my foot down. It's, <laughs> I'm putting my. I'm putting, <laughs> that's what I'm it's like, going to be called. I can't even figure out how you make non-alcoholic mead. It's just uh, weird. Cream soda and honey. Everything that's a specialty drink at Universal is just cream soda plus flavor. Cream soda and butterscotch, butterbeer. Cream soda and banana, uh, minions drink. Cream um, soda and honey, non-alcoholic mead. You're, you're welcome, wrong. Universal. You're welcome. I don't. Is that going to taste good? No, I'm going to make it. Watch. Kids love cream soda. They don't know they do because no parent ever buys cream soda anymore. I so know. it's new and novel to them. Uh, Universal better hurry up and trademark that before Disney picks up on it. <sighs> Uh, no, for Disney, it's allergen free uh, rice milk. milk, coconut milk, or sh- no sugar added apple drink. It equals non success. <laughs> Grass drink. So I, I've only tried that once and I spit it out. So let's see. It tastes fine with alcohol in it. I'm just saying. Ah, I like the blue one. They so taste the, good mixed with alcohol. Sorry. Wrong, let wrong, me just say, let me just say, as someone who. I mean, like, okay, knowing the speed of the coaster was new information. Knowing the height requirements is new information. Knowing some of the exact phrasing of the storylines is new information. I like the idea that the the reason we're putting out fires on fire drill is because when you have fire breathing dragons all around, you gotta all be trained in fire safety. Like that's, that's kind of brilliant. <laughs> that's that's fine with me. That's awesome. But uh, I, yeah, I'm a little but, concerned how long those cannons are gonna work that well. But I'm excited for it for now. But for now. The the thing that is new to us, the real it's the art. It's the mm-hmm. art. The art is it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's so colorful. Like it really looks awesome. It's um I mean, like there's the dragon's dragon eyes view of the whole land. It's so pretty. We had the like we've been zooming into a blurry 
uh, photoshopped, not great concept art of the whole park that's been smeared with like a with a brush tool. <laughs> And, and we were like, what's this? What's this? I don't know. What's that? And now we have like these actual crystal clear, perfect images. Hey, the sheep are missing from the dragon eye view picture. Yeah, they no are. sheep. No but dragon. We know the sheep. sheep are there. So the sheep are awesome and fine. Yeah, they're there. But the, the the dragons and the eggs are listed on the uh, second launch for the coaster. Anyway, yeah, we know the sheep. They mentioned the sheep somewhere and um, and sheep and dragons clothing, they called it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, the so art, good. the art is beautiful. I also like the like uh, taking liberties, artistic versions of the art, mm. like walking into the land and seeing the statues yeah, um, and the dragons flying. Although they could be real dragons flying, we'll see. We'll yeah, we've see. been promised drones before flying in a land. I mean, they didn't actually go out and say that. Nope. But they did say that there would be. They they said you may. They even they even like they, they're covering their butt. They actually said you may even see dragons flying high overhead. I need to say I need to change that to better. They better have us see dragons flying overhead. How cool is it? Because I was watching my Everything Epic Universe video from uh, December, no, from January of 2023. So a year and a couple months ago. I'm watching it and it opens with the two 40 foot statues. And I'm saying like, there are gas lines running to these two statues for <laughs> flame effects. And Fire. I didn't, it didn't even occur to me while I'm making yesterday's video about all the confirmed details to, to point out, oh yeah, by the way, they confirmed there'll be fire in the mouths of the Viking and the, and the dragon statue. So good. It looks awesome too. It's like in all the animations, it's in all the concept art. And it's like, oh yeah, I forgot. Like we broke that news with a permit two and a half years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to keep track of everything. I mean, we talked about this for years, like literally almost from the beginning of this podcast, we've been talking about this, this park. So, Well, yeah, but like the, the, in 2019 on August 1st, we guessed what we thought what this land would have. And then mm -hmm. a few months later, we talked about like, um, what what we've heard recently and then it was like a year later and we're like oh we have permits we know everything now <laughs> <laughs> it's so good though i'm so excited and the fly like the flyover with well, the camera movement through the portal and then you see the reveal with the statues and the fire just going it looks so good it looks so good it does uh, it's it's definitely like i'm worried about dark universe because of size this mm -hmm. does not have that issue i'm worried mm -hmm. about super nintendo world because of um people <laughs> this, mm -hmm. this is spread out i'm worried about uh uh potter actually potter is looking good with all the murals on it so like it's not gonna i was worried it's gonna be too sterile of just like yeah. a normal city but like they're coloring it up so but this is so colorful it's beautiful this is so alive with all the kinetic energy and stuff and i think yeah. it's kind of cool though because dark universe is going to be so dark except for the wolfman coaster stuff which is going to have all the the Romani That's true. stuff they're hiding all the colorful, colorful stuff behind yeah. the village but it's kind of cool because they're kind of like opposite, like direct opposites in the layout of the park. So you get super colorful <laughs> sides, super dark sides. One corner cool. of the park, all the color. One other corner of the park. All the dark. Pretty much the whole front of the park is all the color. The whole back all of the park the is it's, it's either black or gray. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. The murals look great, though, on uh, in Potter. Uh, that dragon on the side of that building looks so cool. Is it a hippogriff? It I can't tell. It might be. I have to look again. Um, while we're talking about concept art. In the Might beginning here, right, sorry, before we get into like uh, a breakdown of all the attractions and everything, I I was when I was making the video yesterday, I I was saying there's no concept art for Spitfire Grill uh, or some of the shops, and then I realized, wait a minute, the Village Square concept art, the one with the mm -hmm. fountain, which by the way, the fountain is awesome. Yeah. Uh, like not only is the fountain awesome, but if you watch the fly through, mm -hmm. the mosaic on the ground under the fountain is mm -hmm. incredibly impressive. It doesn't even like, you can't even tell in the concept art, but in that fly through, it's so good. Uh, everyone has a uh, Viking horns on. Okay. If you zoom into the back <laughs> behind As you uh, the fountain, do you see like the, the ice dragon breathing? It's uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, liquid nitrogen out on, on all the people, mm -hmm. but then the Spitfire grill, it's right there. It's visible. It's in the background of the village square. There's also like the Kronos arch hiding in the background from the, park entry yeah i see all the buildings of the park entry which is kind of cool that they included that too but if you zoom all the way in something i found interesting now that i've really been analyzing the art is like set extension stuff look mm -hmm. on top of spitfire grill above the ordering stations 
yeah, like the, you talk about the rocks and stuff up yeah, there. It's yeah, it's like yeah, the Skull the Island thing where like there's like mountains and tree cutouts yeah, to make it look awful. like it goes on. And then there's tree, real trees behind that. So it's got a little forced perspective thing going on. It's awesome. I mean, all the color and the kinetic movement in this place is going to be so cool to walk through. I think you're just going to be like smiling the whole time, honestly. And to see all that stuff is going to be great. Now, did you see the uh-huh. theater building, the back left of the same image? It yeah, looks I like see it. <laughs> you see it's painted like a uh, Hagrid's building with a mural. Yep. I mean, they try to hide it behind trees and stuff. But when we go to the like Haddock Paddock meet and greet, that's like mm-hmm. jutting out of this building. So I wonder if it's going to be awkward to have like clearly painted. It's almost like once you get past the perimeter of the like tree berm, like now we're in <laughs> now we're in uh, like theater land where it doesn't care. Like the theming stops at this point. <laughs> it's like paint berm. We're in set berm. <laughs> Well, what happened was uh, a little backstory in the mm-hmm. uh, in the earlier layout for this land. It was flip flopped. I think even in the official concept art from 2019, it was flip flopped. The theater was on the left, and the support stuff was on the right. Yeah. Um. And I don't know for what reason they flipped it. Well, when they flipped it, they changed what would have been the entrance, and they changed the perspective of what we can see from the land. And they like, I don't know. There's no way to hide it now. It's <laughs> just like paint it, paint a mural on it. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. It works for Hagrid's. It's good enough. I And it's weird because they're building this giant Marriott W Hotel Mm -hmm. uh, kind of across the street. And when they do, that's a very tall tower. And it will be visible from some parts of the entrance and front areas of of Epic Universe in my, I'm theorizing. And I believe this theater is actually going to block the view of the W Hotel. I was going to say. The way that they've oriented it. I wonder if they got tipped off or it's just a weird like, I think it's just because backstage areas, they needed the, they have gigantic puppets in there. They're like, well, we can't load in the gigantic puppet this direction. <laughs> Flip like, the theater. Flip make it. Make it easier. It Flip might it. block most of the hotel anyway, though, especially the closer you get to the theater, you won't see it. Oh, so. yeah. Is that, well, no, all you're going to see is uh, painted trees. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, sky, sky that won't always match the sky, but it'll be good enough. It does in the concept art. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's convenient, you know, but still, it's going to look great. I remember we talked about, in the very beginning, we talked about it was rumored that this land would be filled with, like, dragons sticking out of dragon houses, tails Mm -hmm. wagging out of dragon houses, uh, a few heads sticking out. Mm -hmm. And then we had talked about, like, we were worried. And I think this was in the dark times, like pandemic times. We were worried. (laughs) We were worried that there were some budget cuts. I remember we were worried that one of the toothless animatronics on the coaster would be cut. We were worried that many of the dragons around the land would be cut. And it's good to see. What did they say? That there's going to be 30 dragons around the land. Yeah, which is awesome. It's so cool. Now, keep in mind, they're counting the tails. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, though. I mean, and I see counts. at least five tails in the houses in the in the arts. It still counts, though. I mean, we got one that's sticking his head out to shoot ice at us. So I'm yeah, not mad that's at that the one I thought was cut. So I'm very yeah. happy to see that it is still there um, because that's probably the, the most I- interesting looking one. The one with the two heads in the same, like behind the fountain. I'm hoping they move and stuff, too. Like, I hope they're oh, all part of that Is that the stuff. one by the boat ride, I think? Yeah, I can't. I think it's the boat ride. It might even be the entrance, maybe. Yeah, because I was trying to think. I don't know. See, here's the thing. Don't Mm -hmm. tell anyone. But I haven't seen the third film yet, and I don't remember the second. So it's possible I may not have seen the second one either. (laughs) Um, and I'm ashamed. Trust me, I'm ashamed. I'm. I'm. I'm actually this. This whole like official reveal has made me want to go and actually go watch the movies. Oh, they're good. Um, They're good movies. I know. I know. I liked the first one. I don't. Wow, there is a lot of tails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is the wait. No, that's to the right of the boat ride entrance. It's yeah, so you're funny right, that right. it looks like so detailed, but it's um, you're right. You're right. It's just a maintenance room <laughs> and and like uh, the water pump. <laughs> like it's nothing important. You can't enter it. That's fine. It's I actually the top part. Sure. Like it's a two story because the boat ride is a story below this area. It's a yeah. two story. Um, <laughs> just maintenance room. <laughs> oh, I see the entrance for sure now. So yeah, I the entrance has all the, the shields entrance. on it and stuff. Yeah, it looks cool though. I just hope the dragon's head move. That's what I want. I like they get those long necks. So, well, because it's got mechanical room upstairs, maybe it does. That would make sense because that's why it needs mechanical room. It's got animatronic head sticking out of it. <laughs> totally, that anyway. makes sense. Let's go. What else we got to talk about here? Well, uh, I liked that they talked about how it's the biggest world besides Celestial Park. 
Yeah. At, at 15 and a half acres. That's pretty cool. It's really cool. And that, um, well, they got a lot of water in there too. So, and that, yeah, there's like two lagoons that look like one. I, they even like boasted about the rock work. There's 162,500 square feet of rock work. So cool. Wow, the ice dragon like surrounded by really well themed walls. <laughs> it looks that's really just good. on a bathroom. Like that's it looks just really good. They could just be a boring bathroom hiding behind a a thing, but no, they put a giant ice dragon sticking out of it. Uh, I'm gonna be walking by the ice dragon a lot in the middle of summer. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it'll be liquid see. nitrogen, so it's the cold fog. Like I'm back to the future. Perfect. I like the little dragons on the other coaster shot. The little ones, the little that are bobbing there with the where the eggs are and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what those make it some form. See, this is why I need to watch all of the 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 whole franchise so Mm -hmm. that I know all the things. But let's talk about Hiccup's wing gliders. Okay. And there's been one person in our Discord and on the comments of every video saying, "Look, I know you're probably right on what names they are, but they should be switched." Like (laughs) this person kept saying that that Dragon Racers Rally and Hiccup's wing gliders should be switched. And I don't think so. I've been trying to make my case. Hiccup's <laughs> wing gliders make sense because he made a contraption. By the way, the official like press release and all the write-ups using the word contraption and then me watching my video from a year and three months ago and me saying contraption. <laughs> <laughs> like That's a word no one uses. Like that's a word uh, from 400 years ago. Like, what is. kind of contraption is that? Yeah, like, that's- I was gonna say it's like old people talk. We're like, hey man, we we, we are old but people. I, like, mind. it's like uh, <laughs> Bell's father and Beauty and the Beast. What else are you gonna call it? It's like this handmade, like gear driven contraption. <laughs> <laughs> it so is what it is, kids. Okay? It's the wing glider. Whereas the other one, there are two of them, and we're going to rally. We're going to race. Like, and also it's set up like the dragon racing around the posts. Like it's dragon racing. Like what else? It is. Of course, you're going to name it dragon racing something. Um, but Hiccup's wing gliders, which is not a race, uh, 45 miles per hour. Which is pretty good for a family coaster. Well, on our group chat, was it the night before or the day of you and Nene and me were talking and Nene's like, explain this to me. <laughs> what kind of coaster is this? <laughs> like, is it like Hippogriff or is it like Hagrid or Velocicoaster? Um, and, and I'm like, no, I, I honestly, like it's in between like a kitty coaster and, and, uh, and a big coaster. So Hagrid almost. I was like, yeah, I've been calling it Hagrid light for a while. But I was like, you probably slinky dog speed. And then when they said 45, I'm like, that's five miles per hour more than slinky dog. Yep. So I'm actually impressed. This is this is Universal's version of a family coaster. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Universal Slinky Dog. That's all it is. Yeah, but it is. Um, it, it does have some highly banked t- curves, and it's got some uh, punchy, um, punchy launches. I'm all about the skimming over the water stuff too. I do think it's kind of adorable that they uh, put Toothless's personality into it, mm-hmm. with him being jealous and slapping the thing early to start it. Right, because we had heard. We'd heard that Toothless launches the coaster, and I'm like, oh, is he, like, powering it somehow? Yeah, yeah. And, like, no, he prematurely sets it off because he's mad. (laughs) (laughs) He's jealous. He's like, no, I'm the only dragon around here for you, sir. Right, like, (laughs) Hiccup made a wooden dragon, and he's putting wings on it, and he's only got – because all the old concept art from the artists and portfolios that we had seen has wings on every, like, car, all the whole train. Mm -hmm. And then recently we're like – uh, I think only the front car has wings because we been, we saw the trains and we're like, why does the? I guess they haven't ad- installed the wings yet. No, it's part of the story. Yep, he's he's in the middle of attaching the wings, and Toothless is like, no, it just <laughs> launches us. This is stupid. But then that <laughs> explains why we're not flying into the air and why we're like kind of skimming along the ground and yeah. along the, the the water. I love it. We only have only little, those two little so- wings. You can only get so much height. It's so good. It's, and there's a big great. splash on the on the part oh, where we I go know. under the bridge to kind of simulate going underwater. I know. It's clever. So good. Amusement Insider on YouTube has posted a uh, the ride testing, Hiccup Swing Gliders testing, mm-hmm. and we can see the animatronic Hiccup cranking that gear already working. So like he's so cranking good. the 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 bit before the launch, like Someone, to put us into place, and then toothless somehow. But we, I, we still can't see toothless. I don't know if he's there. He's got to be there. He's got to be on the other side. Probably. I assume. Yeah, I assume he's on the other side. Somebody's got to let me in there just so I can hang out and see toothless. There are the other. There's the eggs. They're the baby of the other one. Cracked. I want to say gronkle. <laughs> probably that, a gronkle. I don't is know. Is that a word? <laughs> Did I, I make that the, up? I can't remember the name of the uh, dragon types. 
it, yeah, it's a Gronkle. Oh my god, I got it right. You got it right. It's a, it's a baby. They're baby Gronkles, I think. How in the world? Gronkles How are we, cute. Though, whatever baby. movie they're introduced in, I don't. I have no recollection of such a thing. Well, I mean, it's even though I forgot, it's kind of hard to forget a word like Gronkle, and they're kind of adorable. There was um. There's a fun fact. The Gronkle eggshell seen on Hiccup's wing gliders weighs as much as 84 large chicken eggs, which is about 13 pounds. That's it. I know. It doesn't seem that impressive <laughs> when you say how many pounds it is. Are they are they flying? Are the baby Gronkles magically flying? Are they gonna be on like supports? I hope they're flying. It looks so good like that. Even if even if I gotta see something like that I you know, kind of stick out of a rock or something. I just think they're cute and floating there. You see the the art of the load station? And this happens uh, in multiple concept arts, but they're um, the team member buckling people in has a mm. Viking helmet on. Yeah, I saw their little Viking helmets. It's it's like a workshop. It's Hiccup's workshop. It's 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 amazing to see it all come together. It's all it's all coming together. I like how all the team members together. get the little silly Viking horns though. They're like there's a they Viking showed nubbies. they didn't release the images, but they showed it in the video. There's two pictures from inside gift shops, and one of them has a uh, a father putting a uh, the Viking horn helmet onto a child, like and the child doesn't look necessarily like they want it. <clears throat> Father's like, like you're no. getting this whether you want it or not. <laughs> These are your Mickey ears from Universal. Just deal with it. Anyway, the coaster has a height requirement of 40 inches. Uh, not too bad. No, that is actually really low. Uh, good. Yeah. For, not, not for a bad. coaster, but for Universal for a coaster. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty good. That's pretty cool. Oh, here we go. Here's the height requirements for all the uh -huh. rides. Is this old enough that it doesn't even have Hagrid on it? Boo. <laughs> wow, that's old. Boo. I need to get a new one. Flight of the Hippogriff is 36 inches for mm -hmm. um, comparison. Hulk Coaster short. is 54 inches. Mm -hmm. That's, that checks out. What's Hagrid's? Oh, yeah, I, you don't have it. Huh? I don't have it. Oh, no, uh, I, now we need to check this. Now we need to this. know. 48 inches for Hagrid. 40 inches. So it is Hagrid light. <laughs> if we can it get is. 40 inches uh, um, as long as you're riding with uh, an adult. I think you have yeah, to be 48 yeah. to ride alone. We don't have any of those around here. But that's yeah, it really, that's is really light. That is really impressive for a universal coaster. I mean, that's the same as like Despicable Me Minion Mayhem. That's mm -hmm. the same as um, High in the Sky Seuss Trolley, which I think of as a kiddie ride. 40 inches for Seuss Trolley. 40 inches for the roller coaster at Dragons. That's pretty good. Pretty really cool. I'm mad at that. Anyway, actually a family coaster. It's a good in between. Definitely. That's great. I think yeah. it's awesome. Going in the order mm -hmm. on no, forget that order. I'm going my own order. Dragon Racers Rally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Bring uh, it. Can reach heights up to 67 feet in the air, and guests can control how wild or mild their experience will be. It's just a single person on each dragon, right? Because I yeah. don't want to ride with you. No. I already know what you're gonna do. <laughs> I, I've I already I've watched enough videos to know that before the ride starts you got to start swaying left yes, right I know. left right and then as soon as you get into the 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 curve of the the downward motion you you just start barrel rolling you just start barrel rolling <laughs> and you never stop I'm gonna get 50 spins on one ride and puke you're up everywhere yeah, I was gonna say you're gonna get off and vomit it's gonna be you're great gonna be mead <laughs> everywhere um <laughs> yeah I'm not riding with you nope. <laughs> What's what's great? I saw someone mentioning like, oh, it's disappointing that the the grandstands behind the ride are empty, and they do look really good. Like the color is they really do. good, and like there's dragon houses, so the dragons can watch too underneath the bleachers. Obviously, but yeah, they're all empty. You know why they're empty? Because this is training. This is not a dragon race. We are merely young dragon. Like we want to be dragon racers, but we have to qualify. So we are we are putting our skills to the test on this Viking made dragon riding trainer. <laughs> what, what what if I want to sit in the stands? Um, you'd have to climb up this very okay. tall structure, which is roped mm. off. <laughs> no, okay, no problem. I get it right on that there. This has, by the way, height requirement of forty eight inches. I've seen people say like, "Oh, it's just a kitty land with kitty rides," and it's like, can you imagine Dumbo being forty eight inch high, high requirement? That's crazy. Forty eight is like a roller coaster. 
and not even in this land because you can go on this roller coaster in this land at 40 inches. The roller coaster is more family friendly than this flat ride. This is not the Dumbo ride. This is not your grandpa's Dumbo ride here. Not even close. You go upside down. Well, you can go upside down. But even if you don't go upside down, this thing goes practically sideways when it goes on the upswing. Yeah, so, we're all going to die. Don't ride with um, Alicia. Thank God it's a single seat. Don't ride with Alicia. Seriously. I like all the sheeps with the targets nearby. Yes. Yes. Like, like, and the and the one sheep looks really scared because he's in the giant slingshot about to be slingshotted. As you do. And the ride attendant uh, checking someone's height, the child's height, is wearing the Viking helmet. <laughs> all of the Vikings. All of the Vikings everywhere. And the other ride for the area is Fire Drill. Mm-hmm. The long boat ride. It's, it's such a tiny, it's such a tiny boat ride. Um, someone pointed out that all of the, the, the rides are kind of hosted by different uh, characters from the, the films, different kids. Mm-hmm. So this one is the Viking twins, Rough Nut and Tough Nut. They're fun. They're funny. And um, so like they have, um, they've flooded the, the, the area to, to make it a boat ride. But normally this is just their normal like um, fire training center. But yeah, we had to put the light, the Viking longboats, the longships got to go in there. But we've only seen like the the theming for like the flats that look like flames and stuff mm-hmm. at the end of the ride. But if if you watch that fly through or look at some of the concept art, there's some impressive like um, handmade dragon statues. Yeah, you can see them in some in some of this art right now. I'm looking at and like if you zoom all the way in on that red one on the bottom of the medium art. Yeah, it's got like spiral flames, like it's spinning to look like it's shooting fire. It's so cool. I like the two on top that are like pulling rope or hose. The two guys. It's like firefighters. I <laughs> know. Oh yeah, no, it's and why one Viking ha- one Viking statue thing has water coming out of its horns and its mouth. It's great. If you zoom all the way in, I love that. Welcome to an audio podcast where we tell you to look at images that aren't in front of you. But <laughs> if you zoom in on that medium art of the boat ride, uh, the arch that people go under says winner or loser on it. You see that mm-hmm. on, the, on the post winner, loser, loser. Mm-hmm. Is it is it for us? Is it yeah, the I end of the ride? Is it's it the end be. of the ride? Is the end of the ride back? <gasps> It's backwards. I've been doing it backwards this whole time. <laughs> or, or I don't know. No, I that's don't know. That's the end of the ride. It says winner or loser. That's it, that's the direction oh, of yeah. travel. That is because you you see the tail of the boat and the and the head of the dragon boat. Oh my goodness! I've been doing it backwards this whole time. Dragon well, in boat. my head anyway. It's not like I've done anything definitively. But okay, so the the flats are the first part of the ride, and then it gets into this really cool dragon spraying you constantly as the end of the ride. Hmm. So it gets more 3D as it goes, <laughs> which is awesome and how it should be. It is like a kind of smallish layout, but these things move so slow. But also, I like that it it doubles back so much. You can actually fire at the other boats as you pass them. Oh, that's trouble. So even though like cause there are other splash battle rides like this with two tracks that pass by each other, mm-hmm. this doesn't have two tracks. But because it b- doubles back so many times, you actually can fire at other boats ahead or behind you. Oh, that's trouble. We're going to have yeah. to get two teams on two different boats then. Have a fire fi- fire stopping war. Compete to outscore and outsoak each other. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mostly this has the, no height requirement. Mostly the soaking part. Uh, Absolutely no height requirement. I think they do specify, though, you have to stand on your own. Can I pull the shields off the side and use them as they're intended? As shield? Oh, to to keep the spray off of you? Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. There's a lot of sprayers. I think you're going to get wet. Shield or no shield? Mm, We're going to find out. Do they sell shields in the gift shop to go along (laughs) with the helmets? (laughs) Show up with a round shield instead of a poncho. Yeah, exactly. It's like. It's like an umbrella with no stick. This ride looks fun, though. And, yeah. And, I mean, most of the water rides at Universal are fun. They just people don't want to get drenched. Like, like I'm people. I don't this might drenched, be a thing where, fun. like at Legoland, I'm going to go on it once and then never again. We're going to have I to go on it at least like, once. Yeah, I'll go on it once. You know, I'll bring my uh, poncho shield. <laughs> Look, my biggest thing with the water rides is wet, soaked socks and sneakers. It's the worst part of walking around with. I'd hate that. The other day I was trying to think of the name for the play area and I completely forgot. There actually is a trademark for Viking training camp, not just like the words, but the actual logo. 
That's awesome. Though. And it looks exactly like what they used. So like I, I could have been putting that in videos all this time. I just kept forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 1 million percent going to go through there at least once. It looks exactly like the one they're building for Shrek right now. Mm-hmm. The layout for the raised portion looks just like um, Shrek's swamp play area. Yep. Like I and I wonder if they got a, a two for one special. <laughs> <laughs> or they just yeah, they probably just doubled up and they just themed it a little different. But I mean it, it looks completely different on theming. The the, mm-hmm. the tower and the, the the canopies. There's shade here. Um <laughs> oh, yay. I like that there's also like normal playground stuff that like big kids can use, like us. And then there's also little kid stuff and a little kid slide and a little kid area too. I want to go down the little kid stuff too, but I won't fit. <laughs> if you look. <laughs> 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 that was the saddest little admission. <laughs> I know. If you look in the bottom left of the main concept art, there's like this um, homemade dragon sculpture thing yeah, that yeah, the kids yeah, are playing yeah, yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember we saw that in the site plan? We zoomed all the way into the PDF and we saw this like <laughs> weird straggly dragon thing. Yeah, yeah. How 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 crazy. 2020, we've seen this layout exactly so as crazy. it is with the dragon. Oh, there's a little boat photo op next to I it. Like I didn't yeah, see I the, little, say I like the little boat. The little boat photo op is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh man. Couple yeah, there's years. the little the little kid areas over there on the left. Yeah, I I'm excited because I actually have a child that will be yep. old enough eventually to go play. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna borrow the child to go and do go to the kids stuff. This looks like a cute little area. Uh, if you look, if you zoom all the way in the top right, you'll mm-hmm. see my uh, my new favorite restrooms. Those are the family. They're just two family restrooms. Um, because they're smart. They know they got a bunch of kids. They're all playing or whatever. You're not going to run all the way over to Spitfire no. Grill to go to the bathroom. There's a little, and they're both family restrooms there because you're going to need changing tables. That's awesome. It looks so fun in there, though. The, the entrance with all the dragon heads made of wood kind of reminds me of Volcano Bay. Oh, yeah. It's a good call, actually. The, the style. But it's just so colorful and happy. It looks awesome. This is going to be such a fun land. I'm excited. Wait, are we going to talk about the show next? What are we doing next? Yeah, I think show, show, yeah, show, show, show. Show. show looks awesome, too. Well, yeah. we I'd watched the, the one from Beijing on the YouTube on the YouTube on the YouTube. And like the whole time they've been building this, like we've said, it's probably going to be untrainable from uh, Beijing. Then they trademarked the untrainable dragon because American audiences need to be force fed the words dragon <laughs> like who's untrainable i don't know <laughs> who could it possibly be <laughs> like untrainable is not clear enough how about the fact that it's not just troller coaster it is trolls troller coaster as if troller coaster doesn't tell you it's trolls of course do we need to be force-fed everything anyway the, the untrainable IP thing sorry the, uh, yeah exactly that, that way they can trademark it mm-hmm. maybe that's what it is you can't trademark one word oh all right, so coaster. the untrainable dragon, uh, I was worried wouldn't have the flying uh, toothless scene uh, over audiences for like safety concerns. Like I, was I know ready to revolt. I because like I know like Disney has a very strict nothing flies over audiences anymore rule on the rides. So like they locked down the pteranodon on the other pterodactyl or whatever on the dinosaur ride and like incoming and like we just pretend that it's moving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But they have no problem with us like flying through a foam door on test track. Like they have no problem with that. Like That's fine. If the door doesn't open, we are go- going to break through it. Um, it's literally made of foam. But they don't want to put something over your head anymore. So I was worried. But no, they 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 they. It's in the concept art, and they verified yes, toothless will fly overhead. Toothless is one thousand one hundred fifty-seven pounds and nearly twenty-seven feet wingspan. It's fine. Actually, it's now I want to go through the foam door. Now that you reminded me of the foam door. Um, <laughs> that's big coffee. <laughs> it would be fun. It, it would, would be, be fun. Real I wonder fun. if it's no, ever um, happened with uh, guests. I hope so. I want it on video, though. I think that it's going to be fine for them to get enough safety protocol in this place since it's permanent, it's like a permanent building. So I'm not too worried about that. I mean, I we was, have I like was, born spectacular s- flying overhead. Yeah. Be, I was going to be point. seriously pissed if they didn't do toothless flying overhead. That's like it the is, main like jaw dropping part of the show. Right. That's why we have the giant Tate Technologies screen mm-hmm. so that you can do the flying like flying to Burke like moment mm-hmm. and make it look immersive or whatever. Um, I did like that they and this is what I was curious of because we went to that IAPA talk 
Uh-huh. Was that last year? And the the people from Beijing were talking about it was the the show designer. She was saying how you have to change the shows for each audience. Yeah, and yeah. one of the biggest changes is like the the amount of time you leave from clapping between sequences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which <laughs> so, is really funny, actually. Because like Americans love to clap, and then in other countries you have to earn it. You have to earn that <laughs> applause. So how much time do you put? But also there will be cultural changes. And I'm sitting here thinking. Okay, so what are they going to change for our show? Well, because of the, and this is a Galaxy's Edge type situation, because the land is taking place between the second and third films, Mm -hmm. they had to change this show to take place then and not take place at the end of the first film like it does in Beijing. So we have new characters here and different situations and uh, like slightly older characters. And more dragons. And more dragons, yes. So they have slightly different characters and, um, and they're slightly older than they would have been. I'm, I'm assuming they, they just said that it was um, slightly. It's been altered from the Beijing version. It's cool, though. I mean, that I, I like that we're not getting an exact duplicate, like, even if it's just like kind of some subtle changes to like update it. I like that it's not exactly the same. And I, I can't remember her name, but the show designer from Beijing she was talking about how like they didn't want to do a book report just like because it's easy for Disney films. <laughs> I think she said yeah, that yeah, yeah. it's easy for Disney films because to do a stage show that is like Beauty and the Beast or Little Mermaid or something, you just you have the five main songs. And as long as you hit those, it tells your whole story. And like you barely need anything to connect them to and people recognize the songs. But for a non-musical like How to Train Your Dragon, do you just tell the movie in a short version or do you tell a whole new story but use the emotional um, milestones, emotional touchstones of the film, but in a new story. So this is a brand new story that new story, new story. that doesn't exist in the films, but still touches on the the <laughs> hallmarks of how to train your dragon. <laughs> film. I was like, wait, did you derail? Or are you resetting? What's going I, on over I there? I got a word. It's coming up. Buffering. <laughs> I'm buffering. I got a word. And I need more coffee. There's a, so it feels like How to Train Your Dragon, but it is technically a new story with a new dragon that you're only going to see here. What kind of dragon? The untradeable dragon. <laughs> Thank of you for coming the, to my TED Talk. We're done. Okay. <laughs> I can't wait to see the show. I don't even like shows and I want to watch this one. Yeah. <sighs> At least once. Well, like, I like the Born Stuntacular. It's fine. Just breaks all the time. <laughs> not for me. Not, not when you're not there. <laughs> Only when you're there. I thought so, too. I was like, yeah, it does break all the time. Then I go without you twice time. and it works perfect. <laughs> breaks all the time. Yeah. Well. And Guardians only plays Tears or Fears. I don't care what you say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you're around. <laughs> um, they did confirm the meet and greet area outside the theater is called Haddock Paddock. I can't believe it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so good, though. Uh, but they also confirmed that some of the dragon characters are just free roaming, like um, like they are at Jurassic World in Hollywood. They're not tethered to the the paddock area. They can actually be. I think it was Stormfly is like a walk around because like our raptor encounter is locked in place yeah, behind the because like they, they, they don't want to give away the the legs are human legs yeah. but in hollywood they're like now nah, you're free roaming blue you can go wherever you want so good just uh, let let the dinos free free so, the dinos so it looks like stormfly uh is free roaming and i think toothless which like yeah, even the photo pass person is wearing the horns. <laughs> <laughs> Hiccup and Toothless are pictured here in this meet and greet, but um, the rumor is that the Toothless figure is much more advanced than the one they had at Hollywood for the mm-hmm. movie premiere, and that has animatronic facial features. So it's That's not just awesome. a, a puppet or a person in a puppet suit. It is a animatronic puppet hybrid. That is the rumor. That is awesome. Uh, but Stormfly looks like the walk around. Uh, Raptor encounter. I'm to okay me. with that. Starfly's legs are a little easier to pull off too. Right. It's so. a little more humany. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like, it seems like that's the real win from the announcement yesterday. Everyone was really excited about meeting uh, Toothless or meeting the dragons. Yeah, of course. Because where else are we going to meet dragons? Um, like I'm the weirdo. I'm like I'm excited for shopping, and I'm I'm kind of mad they didn't really delve into it. Of course, you're excited for shopping. There, in the video, there's like two pieces of concept art. One has an interior of I think Viking traders. I can't tell, and the yeah. other one is how to treat your dragon with the um, atrium 
the one with all the like dragon houses on top, but it's beautiful. It has those murals on the roof and it's so pretty. It is. It's very pretty. Uh, and I talked about the rumor that we we touched on like two years ago. We were trying to figure out what all it might have been a Patreon episode, but we were trying to figure out what the interactive stuff for each of the lands would be. And like we talked about what what's the interactive thing going to be in monsters? Uh, a pitchfork. Pitchfork. Yeah. Pitchfork. We're going to run I, out with pitchforks. I stab you. <laughs> torches and pitchforks that interact with the land perfect um, no notes. as silly as that is you know they'd sell like hotcakes oh well, yeah they would uh and then for this land the theory was uh adoptable dragons that like make noises and do tricks and stuff and i think that's what they went with and there'll actually be um touch points around the land that when you bring your little baby dragon to the dragons in the land talk back to your dragon or interact whoa, with your dragon whoa. little baby furies so I'm sitting here thinking it's like Furbies where the two baby dragons talk to each other. No, mm -hmm. your baby dragon talks to the big dragons. That's awesome. Well, I hope they kind of talk to each other too. That'd be adorable. Well, yeah, I, that's, that'd be easy. Yeah, with the RFID or whatever, that'd probably mm -hmm. be an easy way to go. But the big dragons is a win though. That's pretty cool. Well, they got to do something to incorporate because I think obviously Power Up Bands is like a full on attraction. Like yeah, you're yeah. opening up new things that you can like the, the Bowser Jr. boss battle only can happen after you do the smaller ones and earn keys and unlock mm. a whole attraction. Of course. And it's rumored that the Wizarding World in this park will actually do the same thing where you have to do wand things. But now you get to synchronize it with the app. I think next month or this month, by the time this podcast comes out, we'll probably learn more about the because they upgraded all the wand experiences at the existing parks. Yeah, yeah. Once we can connect our wands to the app, then you can start earning achievements and unlocking new experiences at the new park. And there's supposedly like one whole alley you can't get to until after you've earned it. That's awesome. Um, and I think Monsters and How to Train a Dragon won't be as interactive as those two experiences, you know, Nintendo and Potter. Yeah, I can but, see that. But when you go home... Your baby dragon is still a cute, adorable baby dragon that you can teach to do tricks. Yes, please. Whereas the wand doesn't interact with real life anymore. <laughs> yes, please. But the baby dragon is still alive when you go home. So, you know, it's a trade off. Yes, please. What was the rumor for monsters? Monster hunting? Probably. Is that I don't like know what else the, it could be? Like the Magic Band Plus game now at Galaxy's Edge, the bounty hunter? The bounty hunter, maybe. Maybe an unseen kind of... monster hunting? Hi, Kronk. Are you going to talk to? Can you um, imagine if you buy like a Van Helsing crossbow or something and you oh, shoot? You why shoot, would you get me excited? You shoot targets and windows and stuff. <laughs> why would you get me excited? And it's like RFID, so like it, it shoots invisible arrows. Just like a little hand crossbow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like on your wrist. Oh, <gasps> a yeah. wearable crossbow. <laughs> You're getting me excited now. This is not fair. I mean, it's there's really also a rumor. Nice. There's, there was a rumor uh, a couple years ago, Celestial Park would have its own interactive thing, too. That'd be pretty cool, actually. Uh, a wearable um, thing that you can earn achievements uh, around and, and like explore and find hidden things and like yeah. activate yeah. different special effects in the trees and stuff. So like there, I don't know if that's still happening, but if that's true, that would be all five worlds having some kind of interactive purchasable. That's pretty cool, though. I mean, I, I kind of like the wands, even if even if I don't play along in, in Potter, but it's kind of cool to see like the windows come to life and things oh, happen I, around. I appreciate it. I think yeah, it's I the like best it. of what it is. Like, I think power up bands and the wands are really like Disney hasn't even come close to that type of interactivity. No, yet. they're lame. Well, it's just like the drinks. They keep making the drinks healthy and they keep making their games free. You have to charge us money. <laughs> Yeah, the let data me pad buy is something. not fun because it's on the Play Disney app is not fun because it's free. You charge me money and <laughs> give me an entire purpose built device. And, and, I mean, yeah, they sort of grasped it in California with the upgrades for the Spider Man ride. Well, I was going to say just, they were just, halfway there on. because you have to be on the ride. And for a while, it was virtual queue only. So, like, oh great, I spent fifty dollars on this Iron Man shooter that I can only use once today. Make things around the land you can shoot. Yes, How please. hard is it to make things yes, around please. the land you can shoot? <laughs> All I know is now I want a wearable hand crossbow. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's like windows up in the village Man. and like you like you see a little curtain open and instead of creature it's like a monster and you shoot them and they fall backward Man. and then your your app goes do ding do ding do ding cuz you're in front of the manor you're while you're in the monster, queue. Collecting monster points in the mm. app. <laughs> oh. Oh Man. yeah, shooting oh. targets in the queue would keep kids busy infinitely probably punch each other too but it's if still entertaining you, so if you see a kid 
if you're a kid and you see another kid doing target practice in the queue while you're bored, yep. H- holy crap, they would make a fortune. Are you listening, Universal? Are you listening? <laughs> this is amazing. I only want a small percent of the income, okay? It's like an attraction while waiting in line for the attraction that it's actually, so good. I don't, if I don't have to pull out my phone, it could actually be successful. Yes, please. We Universe is already great at not having to have your phone out all of the time. So I mean, they charge you $50 to do it, but. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. I'll buy a hand crossbow. It's fine. Oh, baby dragon. Did you see the baby owl, the little interactive owl, the shoulder pet that they introduced for Potter at the existing parks? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it yeah. does like cool things. I think that's um I think that's along the line of what the baby dragon would be like. Although I don't think it's a shoulder pet. No, um, no, no. I think it's more of a a satchel pet. <laughs> a satchel pet this oh my god. <laughs> it's like a grogu. You keep him um, in your satchel. <laughs> <laughs> this is not getting better. Anyway, now, can I get a can I get a wearable miniature shoulder Igor then for Frankenstein? Um, <laughs> <laughs> could could we do more than just crossbows though? Like, could we have different? Are there more like a like a stake? Like, <laughs> I guess I guess that doesn't work. <laughs> you have to go. I, up I was to gonna the, say, I'm like, what, are we throwing the stake sil- now? Silver bullet. What else? Like, is there? <laughs> Maybe the crossbow has modes and you switch well, through them and I was you're like say, you werewolf could, you could, arrows. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you could get upgrades to make them more more dangerous. Yeah, it's a silver tipped crossbow arrow. Yes, exactly. For the werewolf. Bolts. They're bolts. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. Bolts. They're not arrows. <laughs> My apologies. I'm not using the correct terminology. They're bolts. I, just give me a pitchfork, guys. Diab you. Yeah. <laughs> There won't be lightsaber fights, so we pitchfork fights. It'll be great. We didn't we didn't really talk about Mead Hall except in the beginning, but because um Mead. Uh in, in case anyone is confused, because the permit we talked about a couple of years ago did say it was a full service restaurant. It is not mm-hmm. a full service restaurant. They have confirmed that it is a quick service restaurant. It's minions quick service style though, right? No, it was leaky cauldron in the permits. No way. It's not gonna be that way. I mean, according to all the permits, uh-huh. all of the worlds of I'm going to keep getting it right. All of the oh, the no. four normal worlds, the ones uh-huh. behind portals, uh, have at least one upscale quick service in the permits with ordering mm-hmm. queue. Then you get your number and you sit down your your magic device. And the Celestial Park is the only place with full service locations. Um, I yep. think Potter even has two. I think the there, there's two upscale quick service there, but every other land has like windows or stuff outside of the. Anyway, that's not bad though. By the time it opens, though, if the Minion Cafe ordering through the app thing has worked well enough, I could see them like taking over the ordering queues and making more seating. Because I only like, like that. I, I like the Minion style. To be honest, it has in line. its pluses and minuses. Whatever it's for me, it's better because I don't have to stand in line. You are dependent on your own device's technology. Yeah, yeah. And everyone in your family is crowded around your tiny screen to figure out what they want to eat, and you're not able to ask a human like, "Is this have this? Does this have this?" I feel like a menu board is still more effective at conveying what you want to order, but. Waiting in line sucks. So there's pluses and minuses. <laughs> yeah. I'm, well, I mean, I've had people walk around. You can, I, I've asked them questions. The people oh, no. The, the, menu, the team so. members at Mini, Mini Cafe yeah. are amazing. They no, are I awesome. agree. But even um, when you do order at the cash register, there's not a menu board. There's just like mm-hmm. a little piece of paper they'll give you. Yeah. I, I prefer sitting and just waiting because I want to – usually for me, even though we're local now, like you know, I'm local and all that stuff now, but like – I just want to usually like lunch is usually a break, like a full on. I just want to sit and eat and relax for a few minutes. So sitting down at Minions and doing the ordering at the table, I, I kind of dig that kind of goes to my relaxation. The The downside, too, is that that actually hurts capacity because you have oh, yeah. people for sure. Your turnover t- taking. Yeah, you have people taking up tables that co- would normally be in queue. Mm-hmm. It looks cool inside, too. I wonder no. which food we're going to like more. All I know is that there's a big fat dragon on a tapestry in the background, and I love it. Those tapestries look amazing in the art. They do. But do you see the one I'm talking about? Oh, I don't have the art in front of me. No. There's <laughs> a big fat dragon on a tapestry, and I love it. It's between the two Vikings. Big fat dragon? Mm-hmm. I love it. It's adorable already. Aww. <laughs> He's so big and fat. <laughs> He's so cute. He's a chunky one, he is. He's a chunky dragon. Yeah. Yes, He's cool. he is. That's my dude. And there's like pictures of uh, oh, all the characters are like depicted. Yeah. They're riding mm-hmm. the dragons. Okay. It looks like Stormfly is like roasting up some fish. Uh, it does. 
I was not expecting fish to be on the menu. Why not? But they have savory menu featuring a variety of meats, fish, sandwiches, and more, along I mean, with a collection of meads and ciders. No E. Well, Bur- I mean, there's an E, but there's no second E. <laughs> Burke is an island with sheep and f- fish. I, I don't even I don't know where know. they're going to get the cows from. They can like from. turkey legs and ribs or something. Um, <laughs> and then Spitfire Grill has, I'm assuming it's going to be like Lost Continent where it's like the, the kebab place where oh, it's, I hope it's so. fire seared meats. Mm, I just Lost like Continent how good food. on the press release it says it's hearty meals flame seared by a helpful parentheses unseen dragon. <laughs> just so you know, just so you know, this isn't like uh this isn't like Ronto Roasters where you see the roasting happening. This is happening back there. <laughs> like, Wish you know? they had like a screen or something that showed a dragon periodically just walk by with fire or something. Well, Toastal Cafe shows the little chefs. I know. It's adorable. But this is outside. Saying. The, the Spitfire is outside. Whatever. Could have a um, screen as a window dividing the front and the back of the outside. I I no, I think Meat Hall is going to be my jam. I don't, I'll, yeah, I'll probably get sure. a sandwich, though. I'm not I'm not going to get a giant platter. <laughs> Speak for yourself. And I'm going to get a non-alcoholic mead because There's it will no exist. Such thing. It will exist. It will. It definitely <laughs> you will. know it. Look into your heart. You know it. <laughs> I will get an actual mead because it's mead. Um. So yeah, there's a How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke. It's so cool. I'm so excited. It's so pretty and colorful and awesome. It's and yes, it's, I just said pretty. It's I don't I don't know what my excitement rankings are, but like. It was always going to be, it's probably going to be the last land I ever go into. Oh, I'll like, probably. I'll like peek through the portal and just move on. Like, because I want to do the rides in the other lands first. And I I'll got probably be. To see. But like, I kept thinking I'm going to hang out in Nintendo more, but Nintendo's going to be just always busy. And I feel oh. like this one might be the more relaxing place to hang out in. I, I'll, I'll be honest. I think Nintendo's the one I'm least excited for to see because we've already, number one, we've seen so much of it, even though I haven't actually seen it with my well, own eyes. But I mean, maybe like the first couple of weeks, sure. Yeah. But like, I'm thinking long term, where am I going to actually spend time? Because usually what happens with these things is that Burning I blade. find a place, I find a meal I like, and then I never leave. <laughs> I know. It's always the same meal. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what that's going to be. And I assumed it would be Toadstool Cafe, but this place just looks so chill and colorful and happy. And there's like dragons. And I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to hang out with the Burning Blade. We all know where I'm going to be. It's not, it's it's not it's like, I don't know. The Monster's problem. Land just feels cramped to me. And I, and I, I'm, I'm curious to see how it, it's listen, missing that back half with a new ride. Listen, there's a windmill on fire that's going to give me alcohol. Where else? There's would a I windmill be? with a ice dragon that blows ice at is you. Is it on fire? Well, it is on the ride. <laughs> it is windmill on the boat ride. Fire. There's a there's a there's a 2D windmill on 2D fire made of wooden cutouts. <laughs> I listen, rest my case. Listen, the windmill is mine. I called it very early. It's one of my few wins. It's mine. I'm going to the burning blade. Uh, I feel like the 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 meat hall is a is a good compromise for all it of is. us. It it's is. colorful, like I like, but it's also. Viking alcohol and mead. like you it's viking, viking and mead. it's viking it everyone well, not, has a beard and you'll fit right in not real viking but viking enough yeah it's awesome i'm i i will happily go in there to eat what do you think land what land or announcement do you think will be next for epic universe mm. potter's gonna be last right yeah i think so so probably Nintendo next. Well, I or, Nintendo was supposed to be first. I know we, we, we talked even about hinted that. on it on the, like the last mm. podcast. We were like, well, we'll 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 touch back. I said, yeah, like, oh yeah, when Nintendo gets announced, I hope Yoshi's on the underneath like that. I even said mm-hmm. that. I think they switch things around um, because somebody one, else is lagging. Well, I think yeah. One theory is that Universal Studios Japan was supposed to do their Donkey Kong full reveal first. Mm -hmm. And they're not ready yet. I'm assuming they just don't know what grand opening date they're going to select. And -hmm. until they do, we can't announce ours because they have to announce theirs first. Not that we don't already have an announcement of Donkey Kong and everything, but they Mm want to show like actual footage of it. We're going to get a hotel announcement, right? I think that's when I feel like might be next. Helios still hasn't gotten its full announcement. We've only got one piece of official concept art of the exterior. Um, we need to see the rooms. We need to have, reservations need to open up. We need to see the amenities. So and my I other think, bar. and I so I think Helios is a because we've been talking about an epic announcement every month. I think Helios mm-hmm. is a good one because this month here in April, um, probably going to have other announcements. We have Halloween Horror Nights to catch up on. 
probably be announced the day after this podcast goes up. We have um, the the parade, the the lagoon show, the interactive wands, the, the things, the, all the, the things, the Hogwarts Castle show. There's so many things to talk about. All the things. So, um, and there's a new uh, summer tribute store coming soon. Mm, I can't wait. <sighs> It's going to be great. It's going to be a good year. It's going to be fun. I see all this stuff finally coming to fruition, like after talking about it for so long. To see this announcement was amazing. It is weird. I feel like it's super weird. I got a comment, awesome. and I don't know if it was necessarily trying to be mean, but I got a comment that oh. was insinuating I was just reading the like press release in this video for the, and I am. I am just reading the press release. In this you video. are, but it's also just re, we're, you are literally at this point confirming stuff that right. we've been talking about I'm forever. Just, I'm just saying, like, for completionist's sake, I'm just putting a video out saying, look, here's what all the official names are. So that next time when I make a video, I don't have to say the the ride we believe is named, the ride we expect to be called, <laughs> the ride rumored to be named. I this is these are official names. I'm just for completionist's sake, you don't have to watch the video. I'm putting it up there so I can refer to it in the future. But also it's the perfect. art is pretty. You know, I still put That's effort perfect. into the video, uh, but I pointed out to them. I was like, I put the link to that video from a year and three months ago. And I'm like, here's here's a video from a year ago with the exact same information in the exact same <laughs> order, using the exact same words. I even say contraption. <laughs> <laughs> so it's almost like my everything Epic Universe videos from a year ago was the announcements they're making now. Exactly. They just copied you. That's all. They even did the same order. They're just copying you. Uh, what it, it, it's impressive, though. I, I swear I've been slacking lately. It's impressive to watch those old videos and see all the permits. Like, I really show my work back then. <laughs> 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 These days, because I just take Bio Reconstructs photos, and I'm like, look, see, there's a coaster. But back then, I had to work hard. I had to yeah. be like, here's a here's a permit showing a coaster. Like that's, I remember that's... looking at those permits to try to figure out all the different symbols. It was great. It was kind of fun, though. I did oh, yeah, like stroller it. parking around the meat hall. Is, is there stroller parking in the meat hall pictures? I don't know. Did I we get? See did, I don't see it, any. Well, I see the little, yeah, you're not going to put it in the yard, but I see the little <laughs> walkway to the restrooms in between the gift shop and the meat hall. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then there's supposed to be stroller parking on either side. Mm, it looks so cool. Oh, man, I'm excited. We're getting I think, closer and closer. I think we all need to do some homework and go and watch the How to Train a Dragon films. And wait become big fans for so when we get there we'll be like oh that's the music wait, like, wait a I, minute what 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 wait, what? Well, well, hold, the, you know the outdoor mead hall picture yeah the the nighttime one yeah yeah you see the two vikings do you mean the statues no the two vikings taking a picture oh yeah 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 that's the twins yeah I'm pretty sure yeah yeah the walk around characters i love that i love that yeah. they put them in there though <gasps> that reminds me go mm-hmm. to the picture of the fire drag i mean the ice dragon Go to okay. the picture of the ice dragon. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, with people laughing and ducking. Zoom all the way into the left bottom. Okay. That's Keenan Thompson. <laughs> oh, it totally is. It's totally Keenan Thompson. It's totally Keenan. He's even wearing the same shirt he does in like the 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 woe commercials he was in for Universal. That's funny. Like, that is Keenan Thompson. That is. <laughs> Right? Is that like That's his family? Hilarious. Like Apparently. look at the people, look at the little girls next to that family. They're like art, artistic and cartoony. Then look at Keenan Thompson's family. That is clearly a, a like a car like painted on top of real photo. Those are real yeah. people. They get definitely it's definitely less cartoony looking. Uh, someone on them. our Discord pointed that out, but like That's it's definitely uh, Keenan. That is definitely Keenan Thompson. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> We're going to end on that note. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. You, Bye, Keenan. If, if, if anyone <laughs> else finds some famous people in the... Uh, I mean, he he loves Universal, so he'll probably get a kick out of that if someone points that out to him. That's funny. Bye, I'm everyone. I'm just sad we're leaving dragons now. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye, dragons. We, my friends, have dragons. That's it. That's what the portal says. Yar. Right? Wait, it's, no, that's, that's pirate. a pirate. <laughs> Okay, bye, bye, everyone.